Sri Lanka, formerly known as Ceylon, and officially the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, is an island country in Southeast Asia. It lies in the Indian Ocean southwest of the Bay of Bengal. Sri Lanka, the country, is in disarray. Last Tuesday, the Prime Minister announced that the nation with a population of 22 million people is bankrupt. Our country has held talks with the IMF. In the past, we have held discussions. As a developing country, the situation is different. We are now participating in the negotiations as a bankrupt country. Today, we have fought for our freedom from the tyranny of the scoundrels, the greedy politicians who have run our nation below ground zero. Citizens don't have enough food to satisfy their hunger, workers don't have enough gas to get to work, and schools don't have paper and ink to continue their studies. Sri Lanka's current situation has turned into a cautionary tale of how corrupt leaders can destroy their country in mere months. A tale of corruption, economic mismanagement, and misguided policies. A long list of mistakes by their politicians has left the everyday citizens suffering. Food prices are rising daily, long blackouts are a daily way of life, and there's no hope of a turnaround anytime soon. The most shocking part in all of this is that Sri Lanka might be the first, but soon it won't be the only country to go through this perfect storm. The country has run out of money and the economy isn't free, and the economic crisis in Sri Lanka, which is becoming increasingly dramatic, is running out of food, money, and essentials. Before its bankruptcy, Sri Lanka was a thriving and developing nation. In the 2000s, its economy grew at a rapid rate. Its annual GDP per capita growth ranked above the likes of Singapore, Ireland, and South Korea. A big part of this growth was thanks to its important geographical location. It's in the middle of the world's most important shipping lanes. On top of its strategic location, Sri Lanka is also a beautiful country with scenic beaches and stunning wildlife. All this combined helped the country attract massive amounts of foreign tourists who brought foreign currency to vacation with, a currency that the country had depended on for years to buy imports from the rest of the world, imports that brought in necessities like oil, machinery, and food. That means Sri Lanka was heavily dependent on an inflow of these foreign currencies, especially US dollars. But then the crisis hit. On Easter Day 2019, Terrorists bombed multiple luxury hotels and churches around the country, leaving 269 people dead. This sent shockwaves around the world and pretty much killed the nation's tourism industry overnight. Before the attack, tourism accounted for 10% of the nation's GDP and one-third of its dollar inflow. This sudden drop in tourists left many without jobs and the government without reliable access to U.S. dollars. As tourists slowly started returning in 2020, it seemed like the setback was only temporary. But COVID-19 killed whatever hope the country had left for returning to normal. Many say that oil is the lifeblood of the modern economy. Similarly, one can argue that food is the oxygen of a peaceful ecosystem. There's a reason why most Chinese citizens, especially the older ones, don't mind the authoritative regime of the CCP. For the first time in China's rocky history, Chinese citizens don't have to worry about famine or drought, just like the CCP. Governments around the world realize that well-fed constituents are calm constituents. Focusing on making sure your citizens are fed is a good thing, but implementing unrealistic policies to achieve the utopia-like world is something governments should be careful of. Now, every candidate makes outlandish promises during their campaign to get elected, but most don't fulfill their promises when elected. But not in Sri Lanka, where President Gotabaya Rayapaksha promised in his campaign to make Sri Lanka a 100% organic agriculture nation. And when he was elected, he decided to deliver on his promise. He banned the use of fertilizer without realizing the true effect of such a policy. Sri Lanka's food production dropped by 50% overnight, prompting an astronomical surge in food prices. Even though the government did backtrack on this policy later, the damage was already done. As the country's industry was becoming less and less productive, the credit rating companies downgraded Sri Lanka, which made it harder for the nation to borrow dollars to continue importing necessities. The new government printed money, boosting supply between December 2019 and August 2021, helping to stoke what would become Asia's fastest inflation. Food prices started rising fast, 
and daily necessities were slowly becoming harder to access for everyday citizens on top of rapid inflation. Sri Lanka was running out of dollars to trade on the world's market. In just two years, Sri Lanka had used up its entire foreign reserves of around $10 billion. Now it has very little money to buy imports on which citizens rely, and the country is also unable to make payments on its loans. They had loans just like an undisciplined, impulsive spender. Sri Lanka was addicted to loans. Every time a crisis hit, Sri Lanka would borrow its way out of it. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing if the economy is growing. Sri Lanka is no stranger to borrowing money, much like the US. Sri Lanka had a bad habit of borrowing money to pay off its past debts. But when an economy's most productive industry dies off overnight, as was the case with Sri Lanka's tourism, industry lenders started to lose trust in its ability to pay back what they borrowed. It becomes more and more expensive, so in 2022, Sri Lanka's government, given its poor ratings, couldn't go back to borrowing money on the open market. In April, the government suspended all payments on foreign debt and has been in talks with the IMF to restructure its existing debt. Now, a bit of a tangent, but an important one regarding the world's economy, the IMF is truly in an awkward situation. Even though Sri Lanka is the first country to ask, it may not be the only one. In May, the United Nations warned of a perfect storm that's brewing in the world's economy, one that's expected to push around 200 million people into famine or famine-like situations. Similarly to Sri Lanka, many developing nations are facing a food shortage crisis. Many of these nations are not importers of goods. One of the key imports is food. Since most of the world prefers to trade in US dollars, this means that these developing nations are spending more dollars than they're getting back in trade. That's why they depend on tourism remittance or borrowing to get US dollars so they can keep importing the essential items. Under normal circumstances, having a trade deficit isn't necessarily a bad thing even for developing nations. The last few years have been anything but normal without going into too much detail about why the Fed flooded the market with too many US dollars during COVID to curb an economic slowdown. Because of this and many other reasons, the US economy overheated and prices started rising quickly. To fight inflation, the Fed is now raising rates. These rate hikes don't just affect American citizens though. Since the US dollar is a global currency, these hikes are affecting everyone in the world. As the world economy is slowing down and the Fed is raising rates, getting access to dollars is getting harder and more expensive for Sri Lanka. The straw that broke the camel's back was Russia's attack on Ukraine. Joe Biden said multiple times to Americans, do not go to Ukraine. The reality is, you and I both know, many Americans, a lot of them vets, have gone there to support the effort. First, what do you make of Americans going to support it? Second, what can be done about them? To say Russia and Ukraine are critical to the world's food supply chain is an understatement. Together, they export about 30% of the world's wheat, 60% of the world's sunflower oil, and about 20% of the world's corn. Sri Lanka wasn't the only one that depended on Ukraine or Russia for their grains, and it won't be the last one whose people are going to suffer because of this war. As the world lost access to these exports, Sri Lankans lost access to daily necessities like food, electricity, and oil. As prices for food rise and the value of the currency drops, citizens are quick to buy whatever supplies are available, leaving the store shelves nearly empty. Without dollars in reserve, the government is unable to import energy, so currently it's implementing a 15-hour daily blackout throughout the nation to conserve electricity. Schools have been suspended and fuel has been limited to essential services. Patients are unable to travel to hospitals due to the fuel shortage and food prices are soaring. Trains have reduced in frequency, forcing travelers to squeeze into compartments and even sit precariously on top of them as they commute to work. In several major cities, including Colombo, hundreds are forced to stand in line for hours to buy fuel, sometimes clashing with police and the military as they wait. 17 men have died waiting in line in unbearable heat. Because of all these, tens of thousands of Sri Lankans have taken to the streets in recent months, calling for the country's leaders to resign over accusations of economic mismanagement. The country has declared bankruptcy and is currently in talks with India, China, and Japan to form an aid consortium while it also negotiates with the IMF to restructure its debt. 
the nation's president has also asked Vladimir Putin for an offer of credit support to import fuel. The situation is still ongoing. Many experts believe that the worst is yet to come. Even though China wasn't the reason for this crisis, its government has positioned itself to benefit greatly.